Hi everyone, so today we're going to take a look at the Conditionnel Passé in French uh, and see kind of how it's made and how it works and what it means and all that stuff. So, um, one of the things I think that's really important to know is um, like what is the point of the Conditionnel Passé and, and when it happens. Um, and again, this uh, teacher that I had in high school, he kind of laid things out like this for me and I just found it so helpful. So, um, if you kind of think of verb tenses as being along a long time, um, then it makes kind of sense because um, we have the conditional passé is something, oh, let me just back up, let me just show you here. The present is us like right here in the middle, right? So let's say you have the word like eat, right? Today, like I'm eating, I do eat, I, I am eating. Um, we have other verb tenses that, that occur also within the present. So like eat, that's a command, like the imperative. Or um, it is necessary that I eat, like the subjunctive. Um, but, or like, um, like while eating, the present participle, whatever. Um, but then we also have other verb tenses that kind of span out. So like over on this side, this is anything to do with the future. Over here on the left, this is anything to do with the past. Um, so the what we're learning right now, the condition of passé, is like the most extreme over here on the right in the future. Um, and it's it's like mirrored kind of verb tense buddy is over here, the plus que parfait, on the very far left. Um, and so they're quite similar um, in terms of um, how they look, but they're, uh, they're different in what they mean. Um, what's really interesting, though, is that um, the, the land of if, like, whoa, what would I do if? Um, we kind of have two things. Uh, we have the conditional here, like, I, like again, if someone said, you know, if you won the lottery, what would you do? And you're like, oh, I would, I don't know, buy a really nice bagel. I don't know. This is the conditional. Um, but again, there's also a bit of another land of if, if we say, for example, over here, the plus que parfait. Like, if I had have known, I would have bought those pants when they were on sale and wouldn't have given up the sale. So again, the whole idea is if we had known something, if something had occurred in the past, I should the imparfait and the plus que parfait, when in our English ears, they sound kind of similar. In French, they're a little bit different. Um, this is like, um, if I knew, this is if I had known, slightly different meaning there. Um, and then over here, the conditional is like, I would go, and this is I would have gone. So that's kind of the slight meaning difference here uh, between the two of them. Um, again, what's kind of neat to see, though, when you look at the conditional passé, is that there's a few things that kind of repeat. So, for example, in the conditional passé, the endings, the AIS, there's the same endings that you see in the conditional over here, and the en parfait, and if you've already seen, you don't know, the, uh, the plus que parfait, um, so the same AIS, AIS, AIT, that kind of stuff. Um, another thing that you're going to see here is the past participle, and this is typically where we learn in the passé composé. Um, this is typically the word that, that occurs, like the main verb at the end. Um, so let me just now, um, I'm so bad at the scrolling thing. Sorry, I've got to, this is ridiculous. This is so frustrating. <laughs> oh, for love. This is like the worst part of my day is this stupid smart word. Okay, so here is, <laughs> this is what it looks like in the conditional passé. Um, over here on the left is, so it's, it's basically what we call a compound verb tense. It's where you have multiple words that go into making the actual verb tense. It's a compound verb tense. Um, and so over here on the left, we have the conditional of avoir. So um, if you don't know the conditional yet, and if you don't know the passé composé, there's no point in looking at this verb tense. You will be very, very, very lost. Um, but what is nice is that if you do already know the conditional and you already know the passé composé, then you know this verb tense. It's done. You actually have nothing more to learn. It's just putting it together. But all the words that you need to know, you already know. So, um, we take the conditional of avoir or être, depending on the verb later. So, but it's only those two verbs, right? It's never going to be the, condi the conditional of like faire or whatever. Um, then over here, this word here is the passé composé, is the past, well, the, the past participle of the passé composé. And if already you're like, what does that even mean? So let's say the word is like, I took. Well, then it's like, I would have taken. It's, but it's still in, in French, it's still the word like took. Um, so, just like the passé composé, the conditional passé follows very similar rules where regular and irregular verbs take avoir as their auxiliary verb, and van der Tramp and reflexive take être as their, as their auxiliary verb. So what I mean by that is if you look here, you can see, for example, like to choose, like I will, or not will, would have chosen, um, then the auxiliary verb here is avoir, um, and it happens to be um, the conditional of, of, of avoir. So it's literally I would have chosen, that's what we're saying here, over here, let's say the verb faire, it's an irregular verb. It's again still I would have done or made. So again, these two verbs, the auxiliary, what I mean by auxiliary is the middle verb. They still take avoir. Over here with van der Tramp and reflexive verbs, the auxiliary verb is être. But what's funny is that the translation is still would have, even though you see the verb être. And it's kind of frustrating because you think, well, but it says être. Like where on where is the word have? It's implied in the in the meaning and 
it, we just don't see it in the translation. But in French, it, it basically means would have. Even though literally you're looking and it's like, like entre is to enter. So I'm not even going to translate that one. That's not Let's say je serai allé. So we, it looks as though you're like, I would be gone. I would be went. Um, and you're thinking, okay, well, that's stupid. Um, but it really is like, I would have gone. I would have, well, yeah, I guess gone. Not went, left, but whatever. Um, so just said it. Anyways, let me show you now what this, what it visually looks like. Again, just in different colors, because sometimes that helps. Regular and irregular, the main difference, but there's another little difference later on. The main difference is that they take avoir in their auxiliary verb, their middle verb. These guys over here, van der and reflexive, they take être as their auxiliary verb. These two as well, because they're, they're more complicated verb, um, types of verbs, um, is that we have to have extra E's and S's to make sure that it agrees in number and gender. So those are, those are the two things that separate these guys from these guys. But they still, the translation is still the same. Like, I would have liked, I would have seen, I would have gone, I would have woken up. Like, so it still would have, even though these two mean have, and this verb is être, to be. Um, one final thing is that in reflexive, we have the little reflexive pronoun, like the me, te, se, nu, vu. So um, let me show you, let's just actually conjugate one verb on its own, just so you guys can see how this is done. So let's use the verb um, aimer. So your first step is to write down the pronouns. Not bad, this is our first step in every verb whenever we need to conjugate. So we just simply write down, je suis, il, elle, you, vous, il, and elle. Our next step, and again, sometimes people like thinking of this uh, like math, where if you kind of go one step, then the next step, then the next step, it kind of is not so bad because trying to get from the, the question right to the answer right away without stopping can be a little bit daunting, right? So we know that the auxiliary, and I'm going to change this in a minute, so just don't panic. We know that the auxiliary verb has to be, oops, of, oh, this looks so bad. The auxiliary verb has to be avoir. Do you guys see, like, I've just calibrated this thing. It's like literally an inch off. Okay, so, so our, our auxiliary verb has to be avoir. And then we're going to take our main verb, and we're going to put it right here, ma. So even if you're just baby steps, and it takes you forever to do this, as long as you get it correct, um, it doesn't really matter how long it takes you to get there, um, because as time goes on, you'll, you'll get faster and faster and better and better. So the next thing we know is that we need to then put this guy in the conditional. So that's con what makes it the conditional past. Again, you think like conditional passé, it's a like conditional past. You're taking the conditional and the passé composé. You're just taking them together. So now instead of avoir, let me just, I'll leave it there just so you guys can see what this looks like. Um, we're going to have A-U-R-A-I-S, because this is the conditional that goes with je. And then, again, because I've got to make it match over here, it's going to be jare. Um, and then, this word now has to be in the passé composé. So, I'm going to just put a line through here. A-I-M-E with an accent, that's the passé composé word for M-A. And that is now the conditional past. Um, let me just walk you through the other ones, just in case you guys get confused, but it's, it's the exact same thing. So, avoir, so it's going to be tu aurais, il aurait, et you are a with a T now, because it's conditional. A U R A I T. This is A U R I O N S. A U R I E Z. And again, if, if at this point you're thinking, where do these endings come from? Where is she getting this? Number one, go back and review the conditional. Number two, it really, they're just like a random group of letters. Like it's not, like when we were looking at the future simple, the endings would come right from avoir. You're like, oh, that's avoir. That's just the present tense of avoir. This, this is nothing. This is just a random set of letters that we decided in French would go on conditional and en parfait and conditional past and, and the puisque parfait. So if you're confused, you're like, where did this come from? It came from nowhere. They're just letters that we put in. So A-U-R-A-I-E-N-T, and then A-U-R-A-I-E-N-T. And then this word just copy, it gets copied down the whole way down. M-A, A-I-M-E, running out of room. A-I-M-E. Okay, so what's really nice is that when we have regular verbs, this is, this is all we need to do. So let me just show you how, how this changes the minute it's now a different verb. So let's say instead of MA, let's get rid of all of this MA stuff. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do a few things wrong before I show you the correct answer just so you can see when it changes, okay? So just hold on. So let's say the verb is, um, let's just go Celsius, something new. So again, so let's say I would have had like the je, avoir, which it's not, but hang on. Sortir, 
Now I have to think, uh-oh, fender tramp. This is really horrible. Avoir cannot go with sortir. And what you really should do, which would be really helpful, is have like a little list written down of all the verbs that are Vandertramp and just memorize them. Um, because the minute it's Vandertramp, it should be like ding, ding, ding. It's gotta be être, can't be avoir. So now, it already looks, let me just show you. If we had like j'aurai, and even let me just correct, correct this. Pas ça commencer, mais comme j'aurai sorti. Not j'aurai sorti, j'aurai sorti. E in brackets, because unless we know who we're actually speaking about, with the je until we actually clarify, just leave the e in brackets. Think again like, a, like on an email or a form is when you'd see an e in brackets. Um, if you were to say, j'aurai sorti, I'm sure French people would understand you. They would just be a little confused as to why you haven't mastered that rule yet, I'm sure. So, um, this unfortunately, it makes sense to us in English. And the, the meaning, it sounds, it sounds quite manageable because you're like, I would have gone out and it looks great. And we think, why can't we do this? But unfortunately, the minute you have a Vander Tramp verb, you have to, um, you have to get rid of avoir and you have to put in être. So let me just show you again, really long way about doing this. Do it the long way. Write in être, write in the whole verb être. And then think of it like a math equation. Okay, now I have être. Now I have to change être. Because sometimes it's hard to be like, okay, blank page. Here's the correct, complete, full answer. It's really hard to get there from, from nothing. So then you're gonna be like, okay, être, what is être um, in the conditional? And you're like, oh, what is my root? There's my root, what is my ending? Just say, okay, done. So then you would then conjugate et, um, être in the conditional all the way down. So let me just uh, do this with you now, just so again, you can see what it looks like. So, je serai, tu serai, tu serai, il serai, elle serai, nous serions, Vous seriez, il serait, elle serait. And then, this part is now correct. Now we just have to finish putting in sorti. So this is where it gets a little bit frustrating, is that we want to just have sorti. Like if you guys just saw a few minutes ago, I had, I think we did aimé. There's the word aimé was all the way down. We didn't have to do anything to it, no extra e's, no extra s's, nothing extra, because it was a regular verb. The minute we have a uh, Vandertramp verb, we have to now consider what our, it's almost like, like, think of like an ending to an ending, because you know how we take letters off and then we put new letters on to make the passé composé, and then you have E's and S's? Sometimes we get confusing, you're like, confused, you're like, what's the ending? So, um, okay, so il serait, where am I, so this is, da, 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 this is il, so S-O-R-T-I, and because she's a girl, she's not like maybe a girl, she's a girl, she gets the extra E. Okay, nous serions sorti. We're gonna put the E in brackets because we don't know, like until we actually, it's clarified who we're talking about with the new, the E goes in brackets. But because it's plural, we're definitely gonna give it an S. It's not like maybe we are one. No, you are multiple. So, S-O-R-T-I, E in brackets, S, same sort of thing until we know the gender. Um, the E stays in brackets, S-O-R-T-I. No E in brackets because they're boys. We don't have to maybe be like, maybe they're girls that are boys. No, they're if they're identifying as boys, we're just gonna grammatically treat them as boys. So S or T I and because these girls are feminine, we're gonna put the E no brackets because they are identifying as girls in their name. They put the E in the, the E there with no brackets. So um, that is the conditional passé. I think the um, biggest thing just to remember is these two take avoir in the middle, these two take etre. And it really is, you're taking the conditional, you're taking the passé composé, and you're putting them together. I hope that helps, guys. Good luck.